How's it going everybody? This is Beat the Bush. Today I'm going to show you how to remove a dent from a small appliance like this. I ordered this in Sapat and it said small cosmetic imperfection and it turns out when I took it out it had this big gash or super big dent in it. It's about six inches long. Usually when there's such a big dent like this, you just don't want to have it in your kitchen because it's just an eyesore. Personally, I'm probably going to return this because it is not as described. But before I do so, I'm going to try and repair it. On the internet, sometimes they put on a suction cup or maybe they might use glue sticks. So we're going to try that. And I know this doesn't work already because yeah, see, it's not strong enough for this little suction cup. We're going to try a little bit bigger suction cup. And this is actually not adhering because this spot is not actually flat. So this is too big. Uh, this is definitely too big. I can try. Yeah, it's just not going to stick. So let's just uh, remove the lid over here and then the pot to put that aside. And just don't be afraid of opening this up. Obviously, you might need a security screwdriver set over here. This is something I got in Hong Kong long, long ago. It has almost everything that you can think of, except those pentalobe things from Apple. But it has star ones, star with a hole in it. These are metric hexagon. Here's a nicer view of it. I mean, it just comes with a lot of different ones. And I actually haven't used many of these because they're just too big for usually what I usually work on. We're gonna turn this over and then you'll see there's only one security screw that's holding this whole plate on. We'll find out which one it uses. I'm picking out the T20. And amazingly, this is the first one that I picked. Then I just put in the screwdriver and then this attachment thing and voila. Just like that. Let's flip it over. Whenever you open up something like this, you want to remove the least amount of screws. For example, you don't want to go around removing this because this is obviously connected to this, to this board. And what you're trying to do is get at the outside of this thing so that you can push the metal back out. So you just want to remove, let's say this ring over here. So you see that there's these three screw holes. I'm probably going to remove these first to see if that's going to loosen things up first. So let's do the first screw, second screw here, third screw. Now, before I even remove this ring, oh, it just came out. Um, I suspect that there might have been screws underneath these little rubber feet. Sometimes they put them underneath here, but sometimes they don't. Just like this instance, this is very, very workable because it came off already. Now we can just kind of go like, you know, can't come over here. And then we can already reach inside back here and try to push it back out. So let me go push like that. Okay. Now I actually fixed it to this level before already, but this time I want to fix it so nicely that yeah, it's a little bit better, pushed out a little bit more than this. I can see a little bit of indentation right here. So I'm going to uh, try a little bit harder this time. And I have not done this before. What I see here is this circuit board is connected to a whole bunch of stuff here. So I want to remove this. Is it going to come off? Yeah, it'll come off. And back here, I see a ground wire connected to there. So maybe I can just remove one more screw. Yeah. All right. There you have it, the whole ring removed. So I can easily, you know, take a hammer over here against a flat surface and try to pound these little, little imperfections out right here. You can see some of these little imperfections here. Right now I can just try to push it out, but I think I might need a hammer for this job. So I've got a steel, the, what do you call this thing? Steel L bracket, steel square. This is a machinist square. It is very, very heavy duty and the precision of this angle is super, super duper good. So this is a piece of steel. Anyhow, I'm going to use this as a surface to pound this. Okay, I think this is passable for me. I am comfortable with this level of uh, dentedness. Bring this back. Put this ring back over. 
pull this AC cord out and I got to reconnect this thing that I disconnected before. Just kind of work backwards. Oops. <laughs> that was the wrong screw. Put this one on. Reconnect. Sometimes this stuff is hard to remember. You got to have a good memory that uh, of doing everything exactly backwards. So that's the front control panel. That's going to show all the LED, all the display and stuff. So now we got to put this back. And this was the extra screw over here. Oh wait. Uh, I think it went right here. We see that there is three posts. One, two, three. Three screws. One, two, three. Gotta line those up with there. And screw them back in. I'm making sure that the bottom over here is kind of seated properly. And then you screw it in. When you look at this thing, it looks so simple, right? There's like not much that's in it. I'm not even gonna try to guess what the heck everything is, but temperature sensor, heaters, etc. I think it's gonna work. Put this back on. Which way does this go? This one goes right here, right there. Put the screw back on. Put the lid on, put the other lid on. I'd say this is probably on the easier side. I did not expect it to be this easy. You can see the dent over here. I mean, this looks like a well-used Instapot rather than like a dented, it's almost out the door, you wanna throw it away type of Instapot rather than like a giant bat taken to the side of this thing. So thanks for watching this video. I'm not sure how many people are gonna have a dented Instapot, but you can just apply this to a lot of different little appliances, anything that is dented, brave it, try to open it, and just kind of muck around until you get inside the thing and you can push the dent back out. Unfortunately, this security bit set, I don't know where you can buy this exact one on Amazon, but I'll leave a referral link down in the video description below if I can find something that contains almost a lot of the security bits all in one single set. I do have to say, whenever you go around repairing these things, you have to be careful of reconnecting everything because sometimes maybe let's say you forget to connect the ground wire because the purpose of the grounding is that when you plug this thing in and the power comes from the AC of these two prongs, the ground is the big round one. Whenever the live circuit, let's say something happens and it accidentally connects to some metal on the device, if the metal was connected to ground, then this would actually trip a circuit breaker. If not, it would just make the metal kind of live. The green wire I connected before goes to this metal piece over here. So let's say the ground wasn't connected and some sort of malfunction happens. There is a live AC wire that touches this, no circuit breaker trips, and all of a sudden you go in here and you accidentally touch some metal on this thing and then you get electrocuted. So remembering to reattach the ground wire is probably very, very critical. And you just gotta put things back to the way it was meant to be. So that's all there is today. Thanks for watching.